CataractCoach.com, the secrets to IOL calculations in prior radial keratotomy. Let me tell you the secrets that I've learned from doing more than a thousand cataracts in radial keratotomy patients. You know, in Los Angeles, a tremendous amount of RK was done, and so I've done a lot of these patients for cataract surgery, and a lot of patients come from out of town for me to do their surgery. So let me tell you the secrets here of how to get better lens calculations. Now, the first thing is don't intersect the RK cuts. When you make your incisions here, and watch me do this with the main incision, I'm measuring with the keratome, will it fit? Yeah, it fits beautifully. If you need to, make a scleral tunnel, but you have to avoid intersecting the RK cuts. Now, let's talk about the secrets here. Number one, remember the anterior and posterior corneal power both change with the RK. Well, it's not the case for LASIK. Remember, you have a patient who has a corneal measurement, a, a virgin eye, and you say the cornea is a power of 44. Well, not so fast. Probably the anterior cornea has a power of 50, and the posterior cornea has a power of minus 6, which is pretty typical, minus 6. Therefore, the overall power, power of the cornea is, yes, you're right, about 44 diopters. So in LASIK, you change the anterior corneal power, but not the posterior. But in RK, you change both because the whole corneal structure changes. So in a post-RKI, the posterior cornea may be minus 5 or minus 4 diopters even. So you want to actually measure it. So use a dual shine fluke device like a Galilei or a Pentacam or whatever you have to measure directly the posterior corneal power. Now, number two, remember the corneal power can vary throughout the day. These patients have diurnal fluctuations. Ask them, when do you have your best vision? And patients will say, oh, in the mornings I see very poorly, but in the evenings, finally, I see a whole lot better. I save all my reading to do in the evenings. And keep that in mind. What time are you examining the patient? What time are you measuring the cornea? That makes a big difference. Number three, find the lowest K value in the central three millimeter optical zone. Remember, we're changing with our K, the central cornea gets flattened, but not so much the peripheral cornea. So that change in the corneal shape, you really want to pay attention to the central three millimeters of the cornea because that's the most important for the patient's vision. And by using the lowest K value in the central three millimeter zone for your calculations, you're going to have a little bit more accuracy. Number four, avoid using two variable formulas, especially avoid the SRKT. Why? Well, a two-variable formula, such as a Hoff or a Holiday 1 or SRKT, uses just the axial length and the K to determine what's the effect of lens position. Newer formulas, like the Holiday 2 or the Barrett or the Hagus, they take into account also the anterior chamber depth. You have to enter in another variable. The third variable is AC depth. And so that's a very important thing to do. Use a formula that has three input variables, including AC depth. Now, SRKT in particular really goes crazy with unusual K values. Now, number five, a little myopia is good, but uh, some patients really want Plano. Remember I said use that lowest K value in the central three millimeters? Well, that will therefore give you a slightly higher eye wall power, and you'll err on the side of a little bit of myopia. Now, RK is the gift that keeps on giving, it's been said, and that means that this patient who had RK was myopic. Let's say minus four of myopia. And then after the RK, the patient was plano for many years and very happy. But then the RK drifts. It causes you know, more and more flattening over the decades. And this patient ended up being plus two, then plus three of hyperopia. So this patient, even if you do the beautiful cataract surgery, the refraction is not entirely stable. If I leave this patient at minus a half today, in a few years, this patient may very well be plano. And a few years after that, a little bit of hyperopia. But you just have to make sure you know what the patient wants. If the patient will listen to you, I'd, have, I'd have emphasize that it's better to be a little myopic. But some patients are very much fixated on that idea of sharp distance vision now. Well, then you may have to aim for Plano. And then finally, number six, you've got to wait until the post-op Ks are back to the pre-op K baseline level. What does that mean? Well, when you do cataract surgery, even a beautiful case like this, you're going to cause swelling of the RK cuts. And so that means they're going to get swollen and the center corner will be even flatter. So if this patient started off with a pre-op K value, let's say of 36, on post-op day one, the K value may be 34. And therefore, the patient post-op day one may be plus two if you refract them. That's okay. Wait it out until the post-op K value goes back to the pre-op value, in this case 36, and then the patient will be back to Plano. And it may take a few weeks or even a month or two for those K values to return to baseline. So when the patients come to you for post-op visit, check very carefully, hey, what's the K value? And see what's the progress. Has it returned back to the pre-op K value? 
That's what you want to do. So here in this case, I'm putting on a mono, no, an extended up to focus lens that's toric even. So we're addressing some astigmatism there with a the toric lens, and this EDOF lens will give us a little bit more range, and that can help with the patient's diurnal fluctuation to give the patient better vision for a little bit longer period during the day. So this lens can give about one and a half diopters of range compared to maybe 0.75 to one diopter of range with its traditional monofocal. So there may be an upside in doing this. So you can get that lens perfectly centered up. At the end of the case here, be very careful how you seal the incisions. Don't seal towards the side walls of the incisions. So for the main incision here, you really want to be careful and not hydrate the sides because you could rip open the RK cuts. There's some triamcinolone to help quell some inflammation. We'll put in a... A carbocol agent here to bring down the pupil as well, and then finally put in a small preservative-free aliquot of moxifloxin for antibiotic prophylaxis. And at the end of the case, you want to check all the incisions. So get that fluorescein dye out and check everything. Make sure it's all sealed up. Remember too, they have a we have a podcast. It's an amazing podcast, the top podcast in all about ophthalmology. You can have a good listen to it. It's free. You'll learn a ton. I promise you'll love it. The sole purpose is to make you a more successful ophthalmologist. Now here at the end. Guess what we're going to do? Like I told you, fluorescein, check everything. Check your incision, but also check the RK cuts. Make sure they're all sealed up nicely. And look at that. It looks beautiful. Side out test is negative. No leaking anywhere. You can wash it off with some BSS. This patient had a beautiful outcome. Thank you. And remember, here are those six secrets. Go over them very carefully and make sure you take this into account for the next time you have cataract surgery in a post-RKI.